Hello guys and dolls, how are you today? I hope you're doing well, darlings. All right, let's delve deeper into uh, emotional incest and how crazy it goes, okay? Because anytime somebody manipulates you, and emotional incest is a type of manipulation, all right? So anytime there is any type of emotional manipulation, it can cause some permanent damage to the person on the receiving end or cause enough damage that until they break away from this person or and or receive comprehensive counseling, that damage will remain and it will impact their life for the rest of their lives. Some of the ploys that I know that um, parents will use, and it was also used in my situation with my so-called ex-fiance, the Canadian moron. She also used her health. Um, people will also use their health to manipulate others. You know, you're going to go out with this person and you know, I don't feel well, you know, my health isn't good. Or if you've got plans with your friends, um, aren't you supposed to take me to the doctor in the morning? You know, you're going to go out with your friends late tonight and you're going to, you're not going to take me to the doctor in the morning. So they guilt the person and control them into doing what they want them to do all the time. They usually start at a young age because my brother went through the same thing. What is the deal with this one little piece? It's driving me insane. Um, my brother went through the same thing. Um, he's been manipulated by her all of his life because she chose the person who out of the three of us, he is the weakest link. And what I mean by that is he has the softest heart. She knows how she treated me. So there was no way in hell. I'm talking about the mother. There was no way in hell that I was going to be soft towards her and, you know, get sucked into that emotional incestuous vortex because she was just monstrous towards me. So there's no way um, she was going to try me and there's no way she was going to try my other brother. But Jason is the softy out of the three of us. He's the softest. So she went ahead and she targeted him. She has no friends. She has no family. She has nothing but him. And he has been, I got wind of something being awry with that when, before he graduated college, I said, well, what are your plans? Oh, I got to make sure I make enough money to take care of her. There's your red flag. I thought that was weird. Like it took me back for a second. Like that's not normally what people say. Normally they say, I want to make enough money so I could get a house, so I could move in the country or whatever it is that your plans are. I want to get married one day, have kids. No, no. He wanted to take care of the warden. And that's what I call her, the warden, because she's a control freak. Um, so yeah, he's in an emotionally incestuous relationship with her, the mother. And, uh, let's see, I have known of situations where, like I said, in the Canadian, um, in his issue, she, she used her health. Now, mind you, she's married. Okay. Supposedly. Okay. He sits there and walk, watches hockey all day. He will go to her appointments with her, but the son is the husband. And so because her health has been really, really bad, she would use that to manipulate him. Oh, I'm going in the hospital. Oh my God, this is going wrong. That could go wrong. I could die. I mean, they're going to get overly dramatic. Um, sometimes it's serious. Sometimes it's not that serious. But because that person, that child, if it's a child, they've been manipulated since they were little. So they've had on-the-job training from when they became an adult. And so that's just the nature of the ballgame. So now he cannot be with other women. Some people will forego any type of sexual relations with anyone else. They are willing, some people, not all, but some people who have been emotionally um, abused in this way, they will be celibate the rest of their life because they can't be, they can't have sex with someone else because my mom needs me or my dad needs me. Um, I have also known of circumstances where the guy got married 
but all his wife had to, or excuse me, his, well, his wife, mother would, um, he was married. He had a second wife. The first wife is his mom. She could call at two o'clock in the morning and say, I forgot to bake cookies for an event tomorrow. I need help. And he'd get out of the bed, get dressed and go, you know, this is how insidious this becomes. This is how dirty this becomes. So any type of manipulation does not, emotional manipulation does not result in positive things. Okay. It results in mind twisting. Um, I know my friend in New York, he knows of a guy who is in an emotionally incestuous relationship with his mother. He lives with her. He will always live with her. He has always lived with her. And he's well beyond grown years where you could get your own place and he will not. And he chose to forego any relationships with anyone ever again. And I said, I asked my friend, I said, is he gay? He goes, no. So you've not known him to date men? No. He doesn't date men or women. No. Really? Are you serious? He goes, yeah. He's going to stay with his mother forever. And he's more than willing to forgo a relationship with someone else. Because he's already in a relationship with her. And so, like I said, the mind bend starts when they're young. Um, they will always use their health. Oh my God, I can't believe you're walking away from me. You know, I got high blood pressure. You know, I got this and that and the other. But da, da, da. So the person, even if they try to spread their wings and try to be an adult and try to live on their own, that person will use their health. They will cry. They will make them feel bad. They might even resort to attacking. You're so selfish. My God, it's always been about you. Now, mind you, this person may have always catered to this person their whole life and sacrificed their entire being for this person. But if you try to spread your wings and be on your own, they're going to make you feel bad for it. You're so selfish. I can't believe you want to get your own place. Really? After all I've done for you? Okay. Um... The person cannot, as I told you, they cannot become intimately involved with someone else. They feel like they're cheating on their mother or cheating on their father or their auntie or the, whoever it is that they're emotionally and sexuously and tied into, whoever they're blocked, locked and blocked into, they cannot function outside of that. They cannot be with other people. They feel guilty. And even though it's emotional incestuous uh, behavior, it can creep into incestuous. I know of a situation, um, she's on YouTube. I'm not going to say who she is. I don't remember who she is anyway. I don't think I'd have to research, but anyway, for her privacy, I won't tell who she is, but her dad was emotionally incestuous with her and he would talk to her about his romances and this went wrong and that went wrong. And I mean, the inappropriateness, even if he had, let's say, for example, he had an ED problem where he cannot sustain an erection. He would tell the person he's emotionally uh, incestuous with, you know, I've had a problem with, I can't get it up anymore. I don't know what to do, which is 1000% inappropriate. The whole thing is inappropriate, right? So instead of discussing it, if they have a partner in real life, instead of discussing it with their partner, because that's the person you're supposed to be having sex with, they will discuss it with their other spouse, which is the person they have targeted to mind bend. Um, I think they, I, I mean, I guess it would beg the question, do they know what they're doing? Oh, yeah. Do they know what the, what it's called? Probably not. Do they know how insidious it is? They might and they might not, but they know what they're doing. They're not blindly, you know, going like this, walking through the world. They know what they're doing. They're well-versed on what they're doing. They just can't stop doing it <clears throat> or won't stop doing it. <clears throat> and I'm sure there are people who finally got counseling, broke away from it, and have cut all contact with that person because otherwise it'll never stop. The control would never stop. I can't believe you got married. You deserted me. Um, no, that's called normal. Dummy. People get married. That's what they do. You had a kid? What is wrong with you? Now your kid is going to be more important than me? I've done more for you than your kid's ever done. 
right? That's called the nature of a child taking care of a kid. The parent does more. That's normal. But it, it's mind bed. And for those of you who have broken away from it, even if you don't didn't know the title, I'm very proud of you because you would have been stayed locked into this until this person died. And even if they died first, there's a strong possibility you still can't function because you don't even know who you are anymore because they took everything from you. They took your identity. They took your soul. They took everything from you. So there's a strong, strong, strong possibility that even when they're done, they're gone. You can't feel relief because the damage is so insidious and so mind bending and so deep, like the roots of a tree, real deep, deep, deep into the earth. The roots run so deep, you cannot break it even when they're, they're gone. So there's no relief, not necessarily relief when they're dead. You're like, oh my God, what will I do now? My whole identity has been around this person, <sighs> you know, and they may spaz. Here's, here's, here's where it gets even more twisted. Okay. There was a guy who's a criminal. He liked to kill people. We're not surprised. His mother was a psychopath. So naturally, but his mother was mean, vicious, abusive, nasty, hateful, um, insulting. Their whole relationship was that. When she died, he bottomed out and cried and cried and cried. And I'm thinking, you should rejoice that she's gone. The warden for, for you know, the, the warden for the prison. I can't talk today. The warden that runs the prison is dead. Hallelujah. You're free. It doesn't work that way. If their mind has been severely bent, it doesn't necessarily get unbent on its own. It may require medication. The person could be clinically depressed now. Um, you know, support group, therapy, all of that. And cutting the rest of the family off because here's where it gets even. Let's, let's twist a little more, okay? Shall we? There's always enablers. Every single family has somebody who is an idiot. I don't care if people get mad. Every family has an idiot or several idiots who encourage the person who is manipulating the other person. So even if you tried to break free, let's say it's your mom, you and your mom, you're trying to break free. You're like, I'm done with this. I am done. I'm grown. Damn it. I'm grown. And I'm going to do what grown people do. The rest of the family, like say your auntie, your mom's sister might be like, oh, I can't believe you're going to move on your own. You're going to turn your back on your mom. Uh, you know, you seem ungrateful, unappreciative. What's wrong with you? You know, she's got bad health. I can't believe. Now, mind you, mind you, auntie ain't trying to step up to the plate. Auntie's not going over to her sister's house and say, hey, babe, I want to check on you. Make sure you, you're okay. Make sure, you know, I got to go to the store. You Do you need anything? You need some medication? How you feel? You know, you need a ride to your doctor's office. No, no, no. The person who is the victim for the warden, the control freak, when they branch out on their own, other family members are not going to step in and fill the, the spot and say, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of your mom. I probably should step up to the plate more because I really don't do enough. They ain't trying to do all that. Hell no. They will let you do whatever you're going to do and they're going to stay the hell out of it. And if you try to step away, they're going to say, oh my God, I can't believe it. You unappreciative bastard. You're turning your back on your own mother or your own father and you know their health is bad because again, they'll use the health, right? Or you know that the person is not right and they leave the, they got Alzheimer's or whatever the hell's wrong with them and you just go up and go your do your life. Wow. Wow, I'm glad you're not my kid. So the twistedness can run in the family. It could be generation after generation after generation. And, and, and it's called generational curses. And that's when you have to cut ties with everybody. Everybody. And don't feel bad about it because they don't respect you any damn way. Right? They don't respect you. You're not tied to somebody just because you're blood related. Let me repeat that. You are not tied to someone because you're blood related. Eh, eh No. If they can't respect you, you're out of there. Okay? And you cut them all off and you'd be done with it. So, um, oh, so we're going to tell you about the one lady. I think I forgot to tell you. <laughs> anyway, he came home drunk one night and he was laying in his daughter's bed. He was drunk as hell and he laid in his daughter's bed. And she pretended she was asleep. 
she, as she laid there, she began to feel him become aroused. This is her father laying in her bed. She's a teenager. She was horrified, of course. She jumped up, ran into the living room, and uh, slept on the couch. So it was always emotionally incestuous, but then it started to turn into sexual incest. And when you're drunk, the real you comes out. So chances are he's always been attracted to her that way. Could be why he was treating her like a spouse or a girlfriend in the first place. So although the sexual part is not always part of the dynamics, it can become part of the dynamics. And like I said, he's intoxicated. So the real him could easily come out. And it did. And I'm glad she got the hell away from him. And if he insisted on doing more against her will, then you call 911 or someone else in the family should have enough sense to call 911. So it never results in good things. Um, everybody involved, including the flying monkeys, the people in the family who are encouraging this behavior, they're enablers. Um, the whole family is twisted. The whole family can be twisted. So if you have to cut them loose, you cut them loose. So there is a, a danger in always being there for someone. And it doesn't have to be a family member. It could be a friend, a relative, an acquaintance, a coworker. It could be anybody that you've always been there for. They get so, if they're a user, they get so used to you being there for them that when you're not, even for just a split second, where were you the other night? I needed someone to talk to. I went to a movie. Oh, it's always about you. You're so selfish. You knew I needed someone to talk to and you ran off to the moon. Now, mind you, this person's broken their neck for this person endless times. And the thanks you get is to be verbally berated and punished because you tried to do something for yourself. How dare you? Right? This is when you cut all ties. You just, you're done. That's it. I'm done. All right? Okay? You even have situations where... This one particular family member treats you horribly, but then when their health fails, you feel obligated to take care of them. Even though they done told you to F off, go screw yourself, I wish you were dead, okay? You feel obligated to take care of this person because that's still your aunt or your uncle or your grandmother. You treat me like shit, good luck getting me to take care of your ass. I cut you off in a heartbeat. I don't give a shit if we related by blood or not. Sigh off freaking are, baby. I guess you're going in a nursing home because don't rely on me. And people know better than to call me and say, but, but grandma so-and-so needs you. They, uh, they know better than that. <laughs> That's laughable. They know better than that. If you didn't respect me when you were healthy, there's no way in hell that I'm going to look out for you when you're sick. You must have bumped your god dang head thinking I'm going to be there for you. I don't give a shit who you are. And I don't care what your health problems are. Okay. I know some people right now, we're not going to go into any specifics, but I know someone right now who's extremely sick. I'm so detached from that person. It, oh, it doesn't matter. That's not my problem. That's yours. And the reason I feel that way is because <laughs> she's a stuck up bitch. She's a stuck up bitch. And so... I, whatever you go through in your life, go through it alone. Go through it by yourself because I don't have sympathy for you. You've always been an asshole to me. So you deal with your cancer by your fucking self. Take your cancer, shove it up your ass. I'm done. If I was the only person and the last person who could be there for her because everybody else died, she'd be fresh out of luck. I guess you better go to a home or you better contact a cancer support group or something like that. She don't even, this person doesn't even have my number or any way to contact me. But if I was the only person to be there for her because everybody else turned their back, it's never going to happen. I don't, I don't feel sorry for people. If you're a piece of garbage, I have zero sympathy for you. I don't care if you were assaulted you got severe health problems. You are terminally ill. I'm a cold ass piece of ice. 
I would give for people that I love. I would, I would do anything in the world for you. But when you turn on me or you act like an asshole towards me, you've sealed your own emotional death certificate. I would never be there for you. I might say prayers for you if you're lucky, but that's as far as it goes because you didn't respect me ever. So now that you have all these health problems, you expect somebody to feel sorry for you? <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. While you're healing, why don't you heal that nasty attitude on top of that? What? Um, I have a very close friend. She's my sister. Met her online. She has battled these types of health issues too. I would be there for her in a New York second. But that's because we love each other and that's because we respect each other. And she probably watched this video. I love you, girl. Uh, I'd be there for her in a heartbeat. I'd fight a grizzly bear for her. But if you don't respect me, I will watch you get attacked by a grizzly bear and I'll eat popcorn. I am an ice princess and I don't give a shit. You know, and, and people who are abusive never, ever, ever, ever think. It doesn't occur to them that, oh, this person's got a big heart. Oh, this person's going to be a great target. Oh, I'm going to manipulate them and treat them like shit. It never dawns on them because their brain is really not fully functional. It never occurs to them that what if this person has another side to them? What if I take too much advantage of them and they turn against me? They don't think about that. They don't think about that. They just see you as an easy target because you have a big heart. I am an ice princess. So as big as my heart might be for people I love, it'll be the extreme opposite for people that I don't. And I have zero sympathy. And I've had people look at me funny when they say, oh, yeah, so-and-so is really, really sick. And so-and-so has got this going on and that going on. And I'm like, okay, and? And they're like, oh, that's cold. No, it's not. That person never had respect for me. That person wouldn't piss on me if I was on fire. Why should I give a shit that you're going through stuff? That's your problem. I am as cold as ice. I have the biggest heart in the world, but I'm as cold as ice when I'm done with you. And if you have never, ever, 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 ever had respect for me, I don't care if you're a relative or not. If you have never had respect for me, regardless of playing nice sometimes because you're trying to get your way, I'm an ice princess and there's no coming back from it. Once I get on that icy page, I don't come back around. It's just the way it is, you know, but the people that I do care about, I am there for them and that's it. And I will always be there for them unless they don't want us to be close anymore. Then it's a done deal. It was nice knowing you, but, um, I'll, I'll feel sad and I'll be hurt, but you know, life goes on, but yeah, I'll flip in a heartbeat and I'll be the iciest person you ever knew because, and, and I've seen people who were treated like crap by their family member all their life, all their whole life. They were treated like crap. And the person died and they went to their funeral. Why? Why are you going to this person's funeral? Why? Okay. I know of a friend, and I'm going to let you guys go, but I know of a friend who, her grandmother always treated her like crap. Always, always treated her bad. And one time she bought flowers for a grandmother. Why? I don't know. She's proven to you multiple times. She can't stand you. So why are you going above and beyond is beyond me. You're asking to get kicked in your teeth and you're going to get it every time. This person's already showed you who they are. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. Okay. So she got flowers for a grandma one time. Her grandma's response was, what the F did you get these for me for? <clears throat> Uh-huh. Let me explain something to y'all. That would be, no, 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 no. I would say that's the last time I'd see this person. First of all, first of all, first of all, that's not true. Once I realized that you hated my guts a long time ago, you don't ever have to worry about me again. I'm gone. I'm in the wind. Poof, gone. So she asked me, this particular person asked me when the, the bitch died. Should I go to her funeral? Should I go to her funeral? Should I go? 
And there's my grandma. See, people feel obligated because of biology. It's stupid. That person hates you. Get a grip. So she asked me, y'all will be very proud. Y'all would be so proud of me. <laughs> she asked me, should I go? Should I go? Should I go to her funeral? I said, it's totally up to you. See, I'm not going to put my personal feelings in it because this is your situation. And regardless of what I say, because you're locked into this person emotionally, there's nothing I can say that's going to change your mind if you're still going to be devoted to them. So I didn't give her my opinion. I just said, well, you got to do what your heart tells you to do. Well, she always hated me and she always called me a bitch and she cussed at me when I gave her flowers and I took care of her when she was sick and she was so mean and da 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 and I don't know if I should go. I said, well, if you're going to feel bad that you don't go, then you, I guess you're going to have to go, but it's totally up to you. She ended up going, well, first let's backtrack. Her family hates her. I mean, narcissism runs all up in and through her family. And, um, excuse me, guys. <clears throat> narcissism is all up in and through her family. Because her family is so disrespectful and they would all be at the funeral, she said, how do I avoid them? How do I avoid them? How do I avoid them? Excuse me. And I'm drinking and wearing. Ha! Gotta love that. What do I do? I mean, they're going to be there and they're going to start some crap because they always do. What do I do? And I said, you go to the funeral after it's already started. You sit in the back. I talked about this in another video. And then before it's completely over, before people stand up to walk away, you get the hell up out of the church. Because she's trying to avoid her twisted family. Did she do that? No. No. She stayed. And her mother was fake nice to her. And her mother's always hated her. Gus told her, I wish you were never born. But because everybody's standing there at the funeral. Uh, because everybody's standing there, she's trying to hug her daughter and act like, oh, baby, I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad you came in from out of town. We missed you. And it's all phony bullshit. And she subjected herself to that. I told her how to avoid it. She ignored me. So you got to pay the price. I think our friendship eventually ended because I realized that she prefers toxic people to non-toxic. So I let her go. Um, she was with a guy who was cheating on her. <sighs> you know, she he was cheating on her. He washed the sheets. She came home early from out of town. He don't never wash sheets while he was washing them because he just finished humping his mistress, okay? I mean, people. some people love the toxicity. They freaking love it. They'll never leave it. And I can't do nothing for you. There's nothing, if you're emotionally locked into a person, there's nothing I can say or do that's going to give you a wake-up call because you don't want a wake-up call. So I cut her off. The same guy that was beating on her, the same guy that was cheating on her, is the same guy that showed you showed her a picture of his <clears throat> she got all hot and bothered after she was gone with from him and she welcomed him back in her life and quit talking to me because she knew that I would say are you crazy or what you know what he's put you through before but he seduced her with a picture and she fell for it some people don't want help and I can't make you love yourself and I can't make you want to get better and I can't make you cut strings with your psychotic family or whoever. I can't make you do that. If you don't want to, you have to suffer the consequences. It's just the way it is. I love you guys. Take care and um, stay cool like ice cubes. Bye-bye.